Three times we have made it to the preliminary round of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Three times we have been knocked out in that first round. We did manage a single win against Inter Miami on our second try, but took a backslide last season. We've got a new club, new country, new prospects, new results. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to episode number 43 of the American Dream. I'm Mr. Cellophane. Be sure to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the series so far. I do not know what to expect from this Mazatlan Football Club team. They're in Liga MX, one of the top two leagues in all of North America and Central America, of course. We are in the number three league, so we've taken that step up. We no longer have that salary cap we were dealing with we no longer have those roster restrictions that we were dealing with we've got a whole other kettle of fish we talked about that in the previous episode now Mazatlan is currently sitting in 12th place on the Liga Emmett Keys table they've played eight matches they've only won two they've drawn three and they have lost three this could be our best opportunity to move on to the round of 16 Dallas FC is waiting for us we just need to get past these two matches which as we all know if you've been following the channel for a while and watching all of these videos it is easier said than done we have won eight of our first 10 matches in charge of Saprisa. let's see if we can make it nine Cortez is going to get the starting goal it will be a back four of Gonzalez Innocente Gubane and Herrera Bran and Chacon manning the midfield with Casada Thorne and Edward Lopez getting the starts on the wings we have both of our big guns out there because Esteban Cordero is going to be our striker manning the number 10 is Diego Moreira and one of the beautiful things is players that are not registered for the league can participate in this competition we are coming in off of a loss hopefully our previous form is what will prevail and we are not going to get stuck in a momentum loop where we are on a downward slide at the absolute worst time it was our first loss in the closing stage of the Premier Division hopefully that was an anomaly the exception rather than the rule but Mazatlan in control in the early going nice pickup though by Casada Thorne he's got help up the middle can he pass it in he can sort of and the rebound comes to Cordero and he cannot put it on target goal kick from Mazatlan I hope the fact that all of the early chances in the first 20 minutes or so in this match have gone our way is the indicator and not the fact that we missed an absolute empty net. Nice steal by Chacon. He throws it forward, though, and Mazatlan will regain control. Barahona playing it across to Japer. Ahead for Christian. He's got Latori with a little bit of space. Sargent receiving the ball up front, feeding it wide for Advaldo. Looking to cross it in. Charging in is Barrera, and he got a little too much on that. So first shot that we saw from Mazatlan, actually their third of the match. Only one on target, however. And Saprisa in control, looking to take advantage. Ball played forward. Can't pick out Cordero. Mazatlan heading back the other way. Barrera in control will drop it to his defensive midfielder, Christian. Fed through Barrera, through the defense, and past Cortez, his eighth goal of the year. And once again, we have seeded the early lead. It's Saprisa nil, Mazatlan won. And Barrera just snuck his way through the defense. We were just absolutely caught sleeping. Both our left back and our left center back were pushed up in a slightly more advanced position. It allowed Barrera to get through. He was kept on side by the right side of the defense. And Mazatlan striking first on our turf. We find ourselves down in this first half. Deep throw in off of the near side. Herrera. Gubani sending it long. Ochoa wins it. But his clearance is one back. And here we go. Mazatlan once again in control. Westcos pushing it up. The right wing, Westcos in control, sending it into the middle. Sergeant can't get his head on it, cleared away. Lopez looking to start the break. Marrera, Cordero, great first touch, gets past one man. Can he get past the other? He can, but Koshin, he didn't get his hand on it? It sure looked like a save was made there, but it is a goal kick ultimately to Mazatlan. And uh, another opportunity going to begging for Saprisa. 1-0 is your score after 45, Christian Barrera's goal in the 27th minute is the difference. 
Bit of a combination in the team talk. We kind of got on their case and then let them know how much faith we have in them, which seems to generally work for us. Uh, however, it has not generated another shot on target, even though we have taken the first three shots of the second half. And Daniel Herrera going out with an injury. Well, that ain't great. We've got the 18-year-old Hugo Cordero who can go in there, but I think we're going to go with Gerald, Ta Gerald Taylor. Uh, who brings a little bit more experience to that back line as we get set to demand more from our team. Taylor gains control as he stepped in front of that pass up the sideline. Brand quickly ahead. Chacon feeding it through. Marrero to Cordero, and he cannot get it past Cochin, who will be able to make the save. Luckily, that will lead to a corner kick opportunity, and we are very good on these set pieces as Brand gets set to deliver from the near side. Looking near post, Japair heading it high, and Barahona finally able to clear it for Mazatlan. So, so far, not a single shot on target in this second half as we go to a more attacking mentality. Ball sent forward. Bran is going to win it in traffic. Casada Thorn, heavy first touch. Sabias will take over and drop it back to his goalkeeper. 1-0 remains your score. Mazatlan in control with 20 minutes remaining in this match. We are probably going to have to look to make some changes. Ball one, though, by Casada Thorne. Brand will feed it out to the left wing. Gonzalez pushing it ahead. Casada Thorne into the middle, but nobody in the vicinity. Easily scooped up by Cochin, and he'll roll it out. Chaper, Christian, getting it to Medina. Up the middle, Barrera. Three men around him, but he's still able to get the pass off. Medina carrying it up that right wing toward the sideline. Finally putting it into the middle. Sergeant, though, with a header, and that will sail over the crossbar. Less than 20 minutes remaining in this match. Brand composed, but not doing great. So we'll bring in uh, Steven Ap Apizar, a uh, young player who are going to give an opportunity in this match. Uh, Esteban Cordero is not having a good game. So Edward Lopez is going to go in the middle, even though he's having a bit of a rough go. And we'll bring the 31-year-old Ramon in in his place. Two additional changes made late on as we go to that attacking mentality that we were talking about. Coaching to get it started in the 75th minute. Barahona for Ochoa. It looks like Mazatlan has slowed things down considerably. Gutierrez Barahona up for Christian. Looking to move it to his front line. Barrera swept away by the Innocente, but Barrera will get it back. Medina losing it to a back checking Quesada Thorne. If you haven't figured out, I like to use hockey terms every once in a while. I know this is a football manager simulation, but you know what? Get over it. Chacon playing it ahead. Ramon trying to break through the line. Ramon still in control. Around the edge of the box, he'll shoot, and Cochin will make the diving stop. Ball destined for the top corner. We are finally getting a shot on target, but it is probably not going to be enough as we tick down the less than five minutes of regular time in this match. The XG battle has been ours. The number of shots on goal. Turnover, though. Casada Thorne. Lopez feeding it to Ramon, getting it deep. Ramon shooting. It's going to go off of Cochin's hand and out for a corner. He had a perfect one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and frankly, it was a terrible shot. Ramon's corner, though. Lopez can't get there. Sargent heads it. Marrera wins it, trying to pop it over. Cochin, uh, Saprisa, though, cannot get it past the goalkeeper. And even though we took our chances, we did not take advantage of any of them and 1-0 is your score. Back-to-back -back losses for Saprisa. And exactly what we said couldn't happen is happening. Early on against Herediano, it looked like we weren't going to need to push the panic button as a long-range shot from Chacon finds its way into the back of the net, his first of the year. But an errant pass from Casada Thorne intended for Chacon is picked off by Fernandez, fed quickly ahead to Yara, who beat Shamaro, getting the start in goal to equalize things at one. And then a terrible penalty led to Peronini getting his 19th goal of the year from the spot. We threw everything but the kitchen sink at Diego Rivas, and it did not matter. We could not find the back of the net again, and we fell to Arediano by a score of 2-1. to one.
Luckily for us, though, it didn't have a massive effect on the table. We do remain three points ahead of now both Herediano and Punta Arenas uh, with 21 points each. We've got 24 through 10 matches, still 12 left to go in the closing stage, but that is not our concern right now. Of much more pressing concern is trying to stop the bleeding. We are on a three-match losing streak. We have to find a way to get past Mazatlan on the road. Now, we talked in yesterday's episode about pitch size and how it affects our formation. They play on a much longer and thinner pitch than we do. So we are breaking out our 4-2-1-2-1 or 4 3 Three. However you want to look at it, our new narrow formation, which we have not yet tested in a match. So what better time than right here live or, well, at least pre-recorded on YouTube. Cortez getting the starting goal. Our back four is going to remain with Gonzalez, Innocente, and Ngubane in the left three positions. Taylor is coming in to get the start on the right-hand side uh, in order to take over from the injury we suffered in the last match, Chacon and Akista at the base of the midfield with Brand linking uh, them and the attacking positions, which are going to be occupied by Alvarado, Diego Moreira, and Esteban Cordero. Honestly, y'all's guess is as good as mine as to what is going to happen. Mazatlan did pick up a loss in the league, so both teams losing in their last match. Maybe that'll negate any kind of momentum that Mazatlan may have been feeling after the first leg. They are in the uh, the purple. We're in the white, just so you know which team you are looking at. Hopefully, we can get something done with this new tactic. But the first highlight of the match, five minutes in, belongs to Mazatlan. Medina into the middle. Nice play uh, defensively. It's cleared away. Lopez, though, gets it, shoots it, and finds the top corner. Aldo Lopez with his third goal of the year. And Mazatlan possibly dashing our hopes of a comeback. It's 1-0 on the night. 2-0 on aggregate. Good clearance by Akista. Unfortunately, Lopez was the only player in the area. Moved it to his right foot and found the far top corner. A spot where apparently Cortez, like that itch on your back that you just can't reach. And here they come again, 15 minutes in. I think we made a massive, massive miscalculation. Great save, though, by Cortez. Uh, going one-on-one -on -one with Costa and Cortez winning that battle. But it does earn a corner opportunity for Mazatlan. Medina sending it back post. Gonzalez looking to clear it. Can't get it further than Ochoa, who does need to cede some ground. So the highlight is going to end. We've managed only one shot on goal so far in this match. It failed to go on target. So we basically picked up in this match where we left off the last time we took on this team from Mexico. Marrera with the corner. Can we get something done? Innocente can't win it. Salcedo sliding tackle. No call. Lopez comes away with it. Gets it to Ochoa. And here comes the counterattack. Nope. Innocente steps in front of that one. But ball goes straight to Ceballos. Carrying it up that right wing. He'll stop. Feed it for Medina. Trying to play it ahead to Costa. Innocente's got it. Gonzalez now in control. Brand back for Aquista. Up the middle, Alvarado, Lopez steps in front of him, wins it. Salcedo goes five hole on Cortez, his first goal of the year. And it's 2-0 Mazatlan. Just kill me now. How is it that we can be so untidy and our form can turn on a dime? We were playing so very well in the highlights we showed in the last episode, we ended, though, with a loss in our second live com of uh, yesterday's episode. And that misfortune has carried over today. We are trailing Mazatlan 3-0 on aggregate. And we don't look like we're doing a lot. Bran with a shot from range. And that's going to go well wide be a goal kick i thought it was an opportunity it looked like koshin came close to making a save but he really was just like nope that's not going anywhere near me we did manage two shots on target at the end of the day we've put up a very poor performance do we change tactic of course we don't 
because I don't think it's the tactic. It is just the will of the players right now. And I don't know if we have anybody on our bench that is going to have that fortitude to put in a good showing in this second half. So we might as well force the guys out there to actually play a game. We, we, we put out who I believe to be our best 11 for the situation. And Mazatlan just making us look bad. Uh, Innocente getting in front of that one. I thought Aguirre had just put it wide, but no. Corner for Mazatlan. We've played just one minute of this second half, and it has been all the home team from Mexico. Latori tracking down the clearance. Yaper in control, and blissfully the highlight is going to end, so we don't have to watch anymore trying to close the uh, gap in xg it just is not working gonzalez far corner finds latori moving it into the box almost unchallenged thankfully cortez getting a hand on it to redirect it behind but it will be another corner kick for mazatlan have we even had more than just that one minuscule positive highlight for us i don't think so and even though Brand was going to get to that ball, football manager was like, yeah, your team just isn't going to do anything with it. We are going attacking. We are sticking with the formation for some reason. At this point, I'm not sure why. I can't tell if it's doing well, what's working, what's not working, because we're just not getting any positive highlights. And uh, goal kick for Cortez. Are we going to see it? Absolutely not. We will make changes. Uh, we're going to bring in Killian Toscano, who was out on loan during the first half of the season. Came back. We weren't able to register him because he is a foreign player, but he's getting an opportunity here. Uh, Diego Mendez, unavailable. So we'll get Johnny Castro in. Uh, and Esteban Cordero will make way for Ramon. Yeah, let's see if these three changes do anything anything for us uh the average position with the ball for Mazatlan is in our half and another highlight in their favor can we clear it no finally we do but it goes right Yopert recycles it quickly Aguirre dropping it for Ochoa carrying it into the box along that left edge Ruiz his shot will be ricocheted off of Gerald Taylor and another Mazatlan corner I can't believe that I haven't just ended this episode right here and now because we all know that nothing is going to happen that is going to be good for Saprisa no matter what we do in this final 19 minutes I know I sound all doom and gloom but this is going to be our fourth consecutive shot at the CONCACAF Champions Cup and our fourth consecutive time getting drummed out of the competition with barely a whisper Gonzalez missing wide that's the most positive highlight that we have seen for Saprisa in this second half. We are attacking. We are demanding more from our team. And just nothing is working to change the luck for this squad. And we are going to fall for the fourth consecutive time. Can we please get one back? Gubane, wide for Taylor, flags up. Because, of course, it is. Why would we have a positive highlight that is not going to be overturned by a referee's decision? It's going to most likely end up 2-0. Oh, that's questionable, but I guess Taylor was offside. Great effort. Nice job on the set piece. Oh, good play by Gubane. Stepping up on that one. Four on three. He'll just shoot it from range. And Coach Jim will see that all the way right into his gloves. It, it's, it would be laughable if it weren't so tragic. Mazatlan 2. Saprisa nil. We did not manage a single goal in either leg of this tie. And for the fourth straight year, we are one and done. Honestly, looking at the schedule... Saprisa is just a streaky team, and hopefully the streak that we are on is going to come to an end as we travel on the road back in the league, taking on Sporting FC in tomorrow's episode. If you liked what you saw today, 
And even if you were as disappointed as I am, make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. If you are brand new, welcome in. Let me know in the comments what brought you here. Hopefully, you will be back tomorrow. We'll see each other again. You got 12 matches left in the closing stage. So it's lather, rinse, repeat. We get to the CONCACAF Champions Cup. We get drummed out. And then we do everything we can to get back there just so it happens again. Is that going to be uh, what it's like for our fifth try? Well, you're just going to have to stick around and find out. I'll see you all tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.